All right, guys, I'm here with my 2008 Chrysler Sebring, and I've been having some trouble with Freon leaking out of my system. I've charged it three or four times now. It holds Freon for about two days, and the Freon leaks out, and then I have a hot drive home. Uh, so what I discovered is I'm definitely leaking Freon from my low pressure port here. Um, even just now, uh, to look cool for the video, I made sure I had all the right fittings for it, and when I went to take the cap off, it was pressurized, um, obviously because it's leaking. So uh, what I'm going to do here is normally when you do change a low pressure port out like this, you have to vent the refrigeration system. You cannot vent into atmosphere. That is a crime. You're supposed to use a vacuum bottle and evacuate the refrigeration into the vacuum bottle. And then you're supposed to change the valve and then you're supposed to get all the air out of the system, which requires expensive equipment. And generally people don't own that equipment, so you end up paying a shop, right? Well, I found this nifty little tool on Amazon. Uh, it comes with a 90 degree ball valve, a quick disconnect that fits my fitting, and a valve removal tool that actually fits through the fitting all the way through. And so what I can do with this is I will attach the quick disconnect to the Schrader valve and I will send the tool through the quick disconnect, remove the Schrader valve core, withdraw the valve core through the tool, shut the 90 degree ball valve to seal the system while the valve core is out and then change the valve core on the tool and use the tool to reinsert it to the Schrader valve. So that's gonna save me a ton of money and time. So let's go ahead and get started. So here's the quick disconnect going on. It fits just like one of those R134 Alpha recharges. Now I've never done this before, so we're gonna see how it goes. So everything should be tight here. It's on real good. So let's send her, bud. Now here I am loosening the core. We're gonna see if, if anything leaks, I'll just tighten it back down. Ooh, it's tight. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh, we're gonna be doing some editing in a moment because I need some pliers. Okay, so this isn't the ideal way, but I need some extra grip here. And these knobs are knurled. There we go. Now we're gonna loosen it slowly, so that way as the gas is vent past the valve stem, we'll see if our seal's holding. And if it's not holding, I can always just thread it back in. see this is scary I can feel it pushing on my hand it's leaking past the stem of the tool which is not a huge deal so at this point the core should be fully out of the valve and now we can shut this valve and there we go the valves attached I've never done this before guys so this is a little scary for me too all right Looks like our valve core did not come all the way up with our tool. Hmm, all right. Okay. Come on. See if we got it this time. No. Okay. I'm not sure why it's fighting me like it is. Mm, 
So it appears the stem does not want to come all the way up. Oh, I almost forgot to thread it back down. My theory is that it's not threaded quite under the way and it's just really loose. We're gonna find out here though. We're gonna get on it real strong. This takes some muscle. Let's sort this out. Okay, so I did cut the video so y'all wouldn't have to watch me struggle. Uh, but the valve core didn't come out quite as easily as I would have liked, but it did come out. Um, it's actually sitting in the tool still. Um, basically, I guess it was just still stuck in there a little bit. And I had to keep just wiggling and finagling until finally... Uh, it released it won't there oh shit it fell in it fell down which is a problem because I was gonna compare it because I have a whole set of new valves damn okay Ugh. Of course it fell. Well, we know it's an R134 alpha valve, so. This one. Yeah, we know this doesn't fit on it, so. That's okay. I have bought some model specific valves and I just didn't feel like finding them. But uh because I didn't know that I didn't even know this tool came with its own set of valves, but uh since I freaking dropped the valve, I guess I'll just dig out the, the correct valves. Okay, let me pause the video while I find this valve. So sorry, I had to interrupt the video again to search for the original valve, which fell below the car. I had to move the car. Uh, I found the original valve. Um, the other valves looked a little different. I think this valve broke apart as it flew off. So I compared it to this little bucket of extra valves that came with the tool and ended up Seeing one valve, it looked very different, but the threads and everything here looked the same. So I dropped it in and uh, threaded it in with the tool. I wasn't even sure if it would thread in. This was an experiment. You know, I didn't turn it too hard. And it seems to be threaded in. As you can see, the valve here is still open, but no refrigerant is coming out. So it seems that the valve 
has seeded and is sealing. So uh, we're gonna very carefully remove this fitting and boom, bada bing bada boom. New valve is in and it is functioning. So we're gonna go ahead and charge up the AC here. Uh, we, we lost a lot of Freon doing that change out procedure, but that's okay. Um, I have Freon, so that's not a problem. Just rearrange these real quick. So this tool it was a little harder to use than uh, than the man, and also it did it did break kind of. This is not supposed to come all the way out like this, um, but uh, I just had to be careful with it. Still, this probably saved me I don't know a few hundred bucks at the shop, and the set was only twenty. There's another set that's like two hundred dollars, but. Uh, I don't know why you would buy that because it wouldn't uh, save you any money because you'd spend all the money on the tool. Let's go get some Freon. Charge it up. I'm certain she's going to be low because. Quite a lot of Freon shot out of there. All right, let's see. Well, she's not as low as I thought she'd be, but oh, good. Numbers are still dropping. Hold on, folks. Okay, yeah, she's low. <laughs> That's okay to be expected but no air was introduced so it saves me a lot of trouble and she's already coming back up pretty quick my AC is on full blast with the recirculate on you should always charge your AC with the AC running that way the compressor is pulling a suction on it so you're not just filling a dead end okay we're coming up we're almost at 30 PSI now. I like to shoot it for about 35, 40 on my low pressure side. And uh, I'll do a soap bubble test once I'm all done with this. The thing is, when it's a port thinking like this, the die test, doesn't really work because there's going to be residual dye on the port whether or not it's leaking because that's where you insert the dye because I did try a dye test I had never done one of those before either but of course there was dye there because that's where it goes in so I couldn't find the leak you know there we go we're coming up now getting pretty close All right, we're looking pretty good. I'm gonna go see how it feels from the inside. The pressure's coming down a little bit. We're almost there though, it's pretty cold in there already. Okay, let's go see. You might be able to hear her blend door actuator clicking. I have another one of those too. That's getting replaced next. All right. We're just halfway between 35 and 40. Oh, no, we're still ticking down a little bit. Oh, Ooh, we're pulling way down. Ooh. Really? Okay. A little more. Okay. Yeah, we're looking good now. 
So let's see. Moment of truth. Is it gonna leak? Nope. <laughs> but I was scared. <laughs> Before I could feel pressure on my finger when I did this, but now I feel nothing. So it looks like that new valve stem is seating quite well. The air conditioner feels ice cold. Oh man. It doesn't look like the cap is going to fit over this new stem. That's a bummer. It might actually be damaged from when it overpressurizes. Oh well. At least it's sealed now.